One of the things that we've learned to do is to structure our work uh, in movements. This helps a lot of groups work together on shared goals in the long term. Think of very successful large-scale movements like the free software movement or open source uh, or Web3. Those are large-scale movements. Those systems start as small groups, sometimes even one person, creating a set of values, orienting a community, and painting a vision. A lot of the, the key parts um, of today's infrastructure has been built by many groups coordinating together through these movements. Now, when you think about having long-term impact, projects are great. However, movements may have much broader um, success. So we've started to think about how to approach some of this movement building in a, in a faster pace. And we found an extremely useful format that we hope uh, you will try. A periodic in-person conference, multiple times a year, with many uh, local pop-ups in various other events, can create a very strong forcing functions for, for a community to get together frequently, connect with each other, share ideas, uh, discuss things, and get to a point where uh, they're looking forward to the next major conference to uh, release new features, release new projects, release, announce things, and so on. So this has been extremely, extremely effective. And of course, we uh, learned a lot from this from you know, major, um, major conferences across many other, many other ecosystems. Um, today, you'll hear about uh, three movements that we've been pretty excited to be part of. Um, and yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Matt. Uh, very excited to talk to you about Fund in the Commons, um, the idea which became an event series, which became much more than that, more of a movement. So why Fund in the Commons? Why do we start this? Um, I think Juan has done a great job of explaining this. Uh, we truly believe that protection and creation of public goods and commons represents some of the biggest problems of our time. Anything from maintaining our parks, our utilities, our basic infrastructure, um, to the existential risks that we as you know, civilization need to face. AI risk, climate, digital human rights. And we really think that we're at an inflection point where crypto and Web3 foundations make global effective cooperation systems possible. But we can't do it alone. We have our own internal efforts, but we know that we need a community of builders, of thinkers, of investors to actually make these systems come to life. So what does one year of fun in the commons look like? It looks like four events. We've done two per in person, two online. Uh, we have over 1,300 attendees across these events, including 700 people in person. We've also brought over 120 speakers from leading institutions um, into our community. And they've generated over 90 talks and other knowledge artifacts like white papers, blog posts, and just discussions and hallway tracks have been very valuable. And this is all spawned out of an idea that actually came out of last lab week. So since then, we've really built out a dedicated team. We've run and moved to like large in-person flagship events. And we're really excited for what's to come. But beyond just the numbers, I think the, the impact that's been created by this movement is, is much broader. We've created new and stronger collaborations across the community. We've seen a really strong event partnership form with Shelling Point and Gitcoin, who are also leaders in the space, among our many other partners with events. We've seen new working groups formed by the community tackling some of these important problems that we've outlined. I'll point a few out, um, HyperCerts, the collaboration with Kevin Owaki and Supermodular with our team led by Hoka. Um, we've also seen a lot of important work done with governance institutions. So um, the radical exchange community has been very important there. And also we've seen a good amount of momentum with uh, the Taiwan-led institution, um, GovZero, where we've been working on that um, particular among many others. And finally, we've really seen it as kind of a point where we've been able to strengthen connections with some like really cutting edge world leading institutions. So existing friends in Web3 who are really mission aligned, uh, we've also seen like cutting edge um, think tanks, institutions like Cover Convergent Research and Smith Futures, where we really strengthen those connections. We've also brought leaders to the cause across Web3, researchers, investors, and beyond. So what comes next? Um, in 2023, we plan on growing the events. We plan on hosting two more flagship events, eight smaller events with partners, and then 12 local community events as well. We plan on growing the community with a focus on academic and Web3 partners. And finally, we want to scale action through hackathons, builder funding support, and partnerships. 
But I will want to call attention to three specific things. We want to basically spur open source development on impact evaluators, hybrid certificates, and performance evaluation. So to learn more, uh, we have an event here in two days. I encourage you all to come. Thank you. Our goal with the summit is to bring together the people in the world who are the most knowledgeable about sustainability and about Web3 to build tools to decarbonize the global economy um, faster than is possible without Web3. I am most excited about continuing to meet all of the people that have come to the Sustainable Blockchain Summit that are like-minded and interested in building a better space. We're, we're hitting this inflection point where now there's tens of thousands of scientists and builders, entrepreneurs and artists, and, and just people all around the world coming into Web3 and crypto to play around with the primitives, to try building things, and to try and, and use these kind of magical superpowers. Think of movement building, think of joining and participating in movements, just resonating with ideas, propagating memes, working on projects, helping each other. All of those things go a long way. Hello, my name's Carla, and I'm excited to be here to speak with you today about a movement that Protocol Labs has the privilege of participating in, but that extends far beyond the outer reaches of our network, the Decentralized Science Movement, or DSI, to its friends. And I think the DSI movement is a community of researchers, research funders, tool builders, communicators, and advocates, building an infrastructure and an ecosystem for permissionless science. So the DSI movement is new, but it has deep roots in the history and philosophy of science. It began with the observation that while humanity has enjoyed tremendous progress in what science and technology have produced, which you can see in these very carefully chosen milestones at the top of this slide, we have seen less radical progress in how we produce science and technology. So the scientific community started out as a society of letters. The early forms of scientific communication looked a lot more like an email or a Twitter protocol. And then we had the evolution, the development of science becoming encapsulated in research journals with the introduction of peer review as a standardized part of the scientific process. Now, with the development of preprint repositories like Archive for the Physical Sciences or BioArchive for the Biological Sciences, which really had a huge explosive growth during the COVID crisis, we are returning to the permissionless model of an earlier era. And the development of cloud laboratories like Emerald Cloud Lab um, democratized in access to scientific infrastructure, and it's an important part of this decentralization process. So the decentralized science ecosystem is also, accordingly, experiencing explosive growth and continuing on a trajectory of explosive growth with innovations in governance, like the creation of self-assembling and self-governing scientific societies, in communication with new ways of sharing scientific knowledge, new funding models, like the very highly successful Gitcoin DSI rounds that PL had the privilege of sponsoring, um, and also even new ways of working in the field or at the bench. So the DSI community has established a regular cadence of really high energy events where we checkpoint our progress and we share new ideas and opportunities. You can see um, pictures from last meetings, DSI Berlin, um, ETH Amsterdam, ETH Denver, DSI Boston, the upcoming DSI London. If this movement excites you, and it should, you can come to talk to me at the break. Um, you can follow the QR code to be led to a Discord server. We can route you to other, other resources. And please join the DSI track at IPFS camp and the DSI events later this week. Thank you. <laughs>